Hello and welcome. Today I was going to make a fur hat and I thought it would be a lot of fun to take y'all with me and uh, show you the process of putting together a fur hat. This is an otter, member of the weasel family. This is actually what we're going to be making the, the hat out of. We're going to be, like I was saying, we're going to be working with the otter. I got a friend who wanted to make, have me make one for his son and didn't know his son's hat size, so he brought me one of his hats. And I stuck, made this ring here. I use, you can use cardboard or, you know, hard stock material or anything like that. Uh, poster board would work real good. But I just happened to have this sheet of plastic patterns. So I made a, a ring that fits just snug inside his hat, and that should be his head size, we hope. The first thing I wanted to do was to find out what that head size was. I don't go by like seven and a half or anything like that. I just use inches. And it is 22 and a half, which is a real uh, standard in the hat making business. 22 and a half seems to be a good average. So we got this. Next step is we're going to make, we start from the inside and work our way out. So I put a leather sweatband in help protect the hat and keep it in place because without it they tend to want to wander around so I'm going to select some leather for that so I kind of pick a, a width I like the looks of a little bit. I used to cut all this stuff with scissors which work especially a big sharp pair and then I found these things work really well with a metal ruler. Make sure you've got one of these cutting boards underneath it. Don't just do it on the table and be sad. Nice that cuts. Now that we've established this is the size we want. Mark it and cut it. Hmm, this leather is thick enough for me to want to use a glover's needle, which is a needle that's been, the end has been formed into a triangular point. That triangular point actually cuts its way through leather. Works out really well. You use a sharp needle, a regular uh, sewing needle. The point goes in really nice, but as it's going in, pushing the fiber of the leather apart and that it's like putting a squeeze on that needle. It's really hard to get it through and then once you get it up to where the thread goes through the needle, it's really hard to pop that through. But this, uh, you'll see, works really well. Track down my thread. When I'm sewing leather and hides and stuff, I usually use a nylon thread because I don't want the thread to be the weak link in the whole product more frustrating than putting all the work that you'll see it goes into a hat and then have it fall apart because the thread broke. Having a bowl to keep the thread in, to keep it in one place. I don't need a lot of thread to do this. I always double up my thread and I strip it out. Uh, it's, it's twisted, you know, that's how they make it. And as you're sewing with it, the, the drag through the leather or whatever thick material you might be working with tends to untwist it and makes it knot up and gets to be a mess. So I pinch it off at the at the needle and I separate them and then I drive my thumbnail into it. And there you can even see how it just kind of lays open. So that's just to, you don't have to do that too much, just the one time. Right. So I got a knot. The one thing about nylon is it likes to untie itself. So you just melt the ends just a little bit. Makes a little bead on the end of the thread. You can spread the thread apart and give it a pull and it'll pop the knot right down tight up against that melted end. So now you're ready to go. So I'm going to put the, the smooth side facing the the head, so I want to make sure that the knots that I've created, which would dig into your skull, 
go on the other side. So it's going through the suede. See how this needle just slides right through there like nobody's business. I want a uh, kind of a butt joint seam where the two ends of the leather meet, you know, like that, not pinched up or overlapped or anything. It's a flat seam. So far, it's going together good. Nice and uh, snug. Moving down through the one side and up to the other side. I'm getting a closer shot of things. Show you a neat tool. I got a loop back here that I didn't snug up tight enough. Get this. Just a slick little tool. Generally, I, I wear it on my. Uh, finger like that and it lays over it's got a hole in it hole in the end of it and put my needle in there if I'm working with really thick material stick my needle in there and then run it through but on the other hand other end got a little it's like a fid or a um, marlin spike or whatever you want to call it but it's very smooth there's no sharp edges on it so it won't damage the thread but um get half a thread separated is I like to use small stitches for this particular part of it. So that was the stitch I was looking for. Bands the end. Last one. I tie it off and cut it as close to the knot as I can, but still leave me a little bit of a tail to melt off. That will not go anywhere. So leather stretched up on me a little bit. Turn that just like that. There, now that's a good strong. Not that it needs to be terribly strong, but it's a good strong uh, seam, and it's flat. No big lumpies there, but give you a headache. So that goes on the form. Just like that. Okay, so the next part is building the uh, the liner for the hat. And I've got a really pretty piece of brocade here. It's a synthetic, it's be like silk. It's not. Trim the, trim the whiskers off of it. Cut a length off. This stuff I find doesn't work so good under one of those roller cutters. So the hat, the leather, or the fur that I cut for the hat is four inches, four and a half inches. So I'm going to make the liner a little taller than that. Plus I'm I'm going to fold the lining material up and under so that you don't see the actual cut edge, right? I think I'm going to go bold, cut it at seven. Can't mark it with a pencil, it won't stick. I've got chalk, but this will work. Certainly don't want to waste a nice piece of fabric like this. Just cutting the whole end off keeps the leftovers and easy to deal with. And the small ends, pieces left over from this, I can use for other projects. Nothing goes to waste here. 
Cool beans. Okay, so we need to pin it. That's awkward. Take it off and do the rest of it. Yeah. Trim off. Looks like I got another hat's worth left over. Trimming it a little proud so I know it's going to unravel. So now I need a a sharps needle, a sharps rifle. It's a nice two, but a small sharps needle. That's a find in here. Oh, a nice small one. Do. So again, I doubled my thread, and I'm going to be doing a back stitch. You wear a thimble or some sort when you're doing this kind of stitching. Keeps your fingers from getting all prickled up. Back stitch makes a nice seam, nice strong seam. So we've made it across. Now we're going to. So I'm going to open uh, open the seam up, flatten the seam out, and I'm going to base these down. I need to re-thread my needle. So I'm just going to get her started. So basting stitch is a pretty simple, like it'll be a little bit better. Pretty simple stitch. It's just a uh, sort of thing. But yeah, it doesn't have a big job to do it. Just has to hold the fabric flat. Nothing structural. No tension on it. So it's easy going. Yeah, so this is where it gets tricky. Come up with a little plan that seems to work for me. Take a piece of cardboard, and cut an oval -ish sort of thing. It doesn't have to be perfect like that, like that. And then I cut a piece of the smaller piece of this fabric that I have. Remember. Corners off just to kind of even it out a little bit. So there's that. Okay, I've got a needle here all prepared with a long piece of thread in case I might not need it that long, but better to have too much than not enough. I'm gathering it in. I want to hold it you go there I'm just going to kind of tie that there so I've got this and um, this is going to go in here like like that that show so there it's kind of staying put see in there. Put it on the other way. This is a cool invention. Until I come up with that little idea with the cardboard, what a pain in the butt it was to get the stuff sewed together, at least the top, like I'm doing here. 
slippery fabrics seem to have a mind of their own. An extra stitch just to be sure. There. Okay. I need to knot it. And then hide my end. As we we're working on it, that is the inside, the finished side. Okay, that's what I think I'm gonna see. So you turn it back around, business side. And we can take out all these little porcupines. Careful there, buddy. And then remember those threads that pulled all that together? I'm just gonna come out. Take out that and we have it. A liner with a lid. I'm going to trim up some of this bulk up top here. So now we can put it kind of together. Those two parts pretty much done. So now that's done. Now there's a wool line that goes in. We're just cutting out the wool part. The wool will help to give the hat some form and protect the, the leather a little bit more too. From uh, if you have one of these hats long enough, you're bound to get warm in it and sweat salts in the sweat will react poorly to the leather of the fur. So it's good to have a layer of wool and it also adds a little bit more warmth. But you need much with a nice hotter fur. So I'm going to cut this right where it comes together. I'm not going to have a seam allowance or anything like that. Again, back with the bulky seams and such makes lumps in your hat. Now I'm going to do a, a baseball stitch. Create, it's another way to get a, a butt joint and you could do that on the sweatband also. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to pull the top in just like I did. Uh, so there we have the wool lining. I'm going to put that on here. Yeah. So the next phase is the phase we've been waiting for. Cut in on the fur. I'm not going to put a top in the, on the wool lining. I don't because it gives some of your extra heat a place to go. Plus, you get more bulk and it makes hat taller and taller and it looks better if it's not. It looks good on the Buckingham Palace guards, but, you know, time to start to assemble it to all the pieces. I had a little time to think about it and I'm going to set this wool down into the lining here and fold it up and over and stitch it. And then I can attach the fur and everything all at once. So I'm going to also do what I said I wasn't going to do, which is sear the edges because I don't want it to start unraveling. Notice some of my fur is moving. Let's see if we can catch it. Just ever so slightly. It's all the difference in the world. Here we are. I didn't want this uh, wool and silk lining to shift around and get away from me. So I'm going to uh, cut it right over. So I want the wool up tight in, as tight into the little fold there. I can get so that when I do my whip stitch to put everything together, I'm getting both the, the silky lining and the wool and the fur and the leather band all together. And I'm just going to do a simple sting stitch. Okay. 
That's just about better. Okay. Not here. Now this is where it gets exciting, or at least it always was for me. Uh, in fact, doing the fur part, I look forward to so much that sometimes I would jump the gun and do the fur part first. <sighs> And then the linings would be tight. So I've learned to build up the linings first because now the measurement on the head size was 22 and a half inches. But now that we've got a layer of wool and a layer of leather on there, we're going to remeasure. It's up to 23 and a half. So that's important. Otters are scun out what they call case scun. It's like a tube or a sock. They don't uh, split it up the middle like a beaver. When a beaver is scun out, it's split up the middle. Uh, thanks. <laughs> My wife has a day off and I'm all the better for it. Look at that. So anyway, we're going to Put this hide right up the middle. Otter has um, a nice thick leather. So it makes a durable hat. Always cut fur from the back, from the leather side out to avoid cutting the fur itself. And you still cut a little fur. <laughs> there, it's all opened up. Some holes don't matter. First thing I'll do is stitch those up. These sort of little nicks are, you know, they're just stuff that happens. And you won't see this from the from the fur side. It's so the fur is so thick, it just fills in. I didn't even see the holes to begin with. Now it's time to lay out the plans. So what I'm going to do is uh, kind of make a mark here in the sort of center of the tail. And sort of center between the, these holes or arm holes. Get a center line established. Now, generally take off this part, unless I was going to make a hat with the tail on it. It's a regular business down here. It just kind of messes things up. So, i get a line across there. So we got 23 and a half, which means 11 and 3 quarters wide. It's to here. So that would be shy of six inches center. Square that up. Okay, so these two, we don't cut this line, but we're going to cut these two strips out. That's going to be the, the front and the back, and then I'll take somewhere up in here, I'll get the top out of it. My favorite little knives, this thing's so sweet. Had a broken blade, which I sharpened down. It's nice and sharp. Alrighty, that's nice. Something or other. Actually sewing the fur, like before when I was button up, buttoning up those little holes. You want to keep the fur on the right side of the operation. You pinch it tight together, it kind of keeps the fur pinned down so it doesn't follow the thread through the hole it wants to sometimes. Synthetic threads are less likely to pull the hair through. This is a stitch that I've been using since I was about nine years old. It just dawned on me the other day when I was working on my coat that sewing is probably my oldest craft. This stitch is a, uh, basically a blanket stitch, or I refer to it as a half hitch stitch sometimes. I'm sure it's got a real name. I don't know it. Keep brushing that fur down, pinching it tight. And just like with the wool, we're going to get up so far and then I'm going to take and cut away a little bit on either side of the seam. 
create a gusset do that on both sides and then like on the wall several places around the perimeter all right we're just out to the end here and i'm going to take my lovely little knife here and cut a bit of a gusset just a little bit those pieces i don't save So I've got the sides all sewn up with the little uh, gussets cut out on them, so we're good on that. And now I've marked with pencil four more gussets in the front and four more in the back. I'm going to cut those out, sew them up, and I'm going to show you how we get a top for this. It'll be a little different than what I did for the silk lining. All right. So we've got all the gussets stitched up. Get the leather formed over nicely. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, baby. What's that? See how that brings the fur right around nice and there's no like uh, corners or anything like that sticking out. So now what we got to do is make a pattern for the hole here, the top. And what I've done is taken a piece of this regular corrugated cardboard and cut out an oval that pretty much matches the shape of the hat. Put it in here. Pull it down snugly. I'm going to pin it. Yes, to be sure. It won't hurt anything. Except for my finger. Just keep it from shifting around on me while I'm trying to make a tracing off of it. A little prickly inside there. That's good. Now I can move the fur. See where the edge of the leather is. marks and I can fill it in after. And that's pretty much it. Cut her out. Got our lovely piece of fur here. Between the arms, it's really not big enough for a section for a hat. As long as I leave enough room material here for another piece of for a hat. There. I'm going to do it right here. We're just going to cut this out. Here we are. Next thing I'm going to do is fold this piece in half. Side to side, big mark there, big mark there, into my into my centers, and then I'll put line those up and do likewise on the side. Now I have those kind of like registration marks where we'll be lining them up on the hat. I've got a uh, center line already, so I'm just tacking it here temporarily. Again, trying to keep the fur on the proper side of the leather. If I pull these and roll that knot up tight against the, the skin right where I want it to be. I'm going to sew from one point to the next, and if there's any kind of a variation, like if, the, if I end up with too much of this or too much of the top, I can do a couple little puckers and it'll take care of itself and it won't show. And here we go. Still using that same blanket stitch, half hitch stitch. I'm going around the top in a clockwise direction because it's easier for me to maintain tucking the fur in. All right, I've made it around to my first checkpoint and I nailed it. It doesn't need to be puckered either side, so we're good. I hope the rest of it goes likewise. <laughs> We'll find out. All right. Coming up on our second checkpoint, and we're right on schedule. No puckering here. So far, the pattern is panning out perfectly. Here we are at checkpoint three, and still right on track. Okay, we're coming into the home stretch here. I was 16 when I made my first fur hat. It was 
It's a raccoon. Where that thing cut out. Huh. Another fur bearer. <laughs> Kitty hat. I mean cat. Cool. As you can see, we're closing in on the gap there, and there's no puckering going on here. Thanks, man. So now just finishing off that last little knot here. There. And that's what it looks like inside out. Let's see what it looks like right side out. That pretty. See, so I've got the, the front, the hair is going up, and then it goes back across the top there and down the back side. Okay, so we've got the hat on the form, getting ready to sew it together. And there's one more thing I need to make before I can do that. And that is a strap that will go around the back of the head and help keep the hat in place, like this one. It will not fall off into the uh, your ice fishing hole with that strap securely fastened. So we always put those on. This is the leather that I'm going to be using. And I've got my trusty, dusty metal rule here. And I am going to use, once again, the rotary cutter. And there it is. That'll be plenty long enough. I cut it at a pretty fine angle here. Yeah. This angle gets sewn in right in here, right behind the halfway point. I've loaded up another needle with a good amount of thread. That's because I've got I'm going to be going through two layers of leather and the fabric. I've picked a uh, slightly larger gauge needle. I'm going to help myself out here a little bit by punching some holes in these straps just to kind of get me started. it would be one less thing I'll have to struggle with while I'm actually sewing the pieces together. So I've got an awl that I made out of one of my favorite things to make tools out of, an old jeweler's file and a piece of deer antler. So I'm going to punch a series of holes. I have to pull everything up above the form here. I want to make sure everything's lined up where it ought to be. I like to make the seam in the back of the sweatband directly in the back. The hat, but you always you got it on proper. Get past the strap and it's a whole lot simpler. I'm off and running to show you what I've done so far and then I'm gonna sew it up. You can see that. See how the strap is lashed down pretty good. Now I'm just gonna sew around to the other side. Okay, so we have made our way all the way around the back. And the fur as it's coming down on the back, it tends to roll over the, the seam here and pretty much covers up all the different layers. But the front is another thing. See, the fur goes up and you'd be, you'd be seeing the edge of the leather and you know the raw edges of everything. And so to fix that, I am going to bead around the front of it like this one here two beads per stitch these are large seed beads we did whip stitching all the way around the back and that was good but for the front see how it's putting the beads on we're doing the, the blanket stitch again but we're putting two beads on every time so that gets snugged up like that are still pretty much the same distance apart. Make sure you snug them up good. This thread 
is strong and it can take a good tugging. Might as well do it. I don't want this to be loose. Makes a nice finish. And there's no sense in doing it in the back because the fur would just cover the beads up anyway. Just brush the fur down, keep it as far away from what you're doing as possible. There, and you get the idea how it's going on. Um, we've uh, gotten all the way around with the beads. The hat is pretty much done, except we've got these two straps here, and I'm gonna have to make a buckle to fasten them with. So we'll have to head down to the workshop for that. I'll take you guys with me. 